I recently had the privilege of speaking to Dr. Asia Gusa, a leading researcher at the Duke School of Medicine, whose work focuses on the intersection of climate change and health, particularly the rise in severe fungal diseases. Asia, thank you for joining me today. So you're studying a very interesting intersection between climate change and health, and that's fungal infections. Why are you studying that? Well, one of the reasons that we're studying this is that we're interested in the impact of heat stress on thermal adaptation of fungi. That is their ability to survive at higher temperatures. You may have seen the, the hit HBO series, The Last of Us, which actually you know, put out there this idea that thermal adaptation could lead to fungi right. being more severe disease, disease causing. And while the story is fictional, there is actual truth that we're very concerned about this rising threat. Um, and in particular, we're seeing the evolution of new fungi species in the environment that never used to cause disease causing disease. And so we're really interested in understanding, is this a result of thermal adaptation, for example, um, or what other factors are causing this to occur? But the alarming thing is that a lot of these drug, um, new emerging species of fungi are also very multi-drug resistant. And this makes it much more difficult to treat infections. So we want to understand the connection between the adaptations that are occurring and also um, our ability to treat infections. So what are you specifically finding in your research? Right, so our, our research really focuses on ways in which we're protected from fungal disease. And one of these is actually our higher body temperature. So most fungi thrive at cooler temperatures and we're actually protected from them because they can't survive at those higher temperatures. Right. However, we're studying the impact of heat stress on fungi and their ability to adapt and grow at higher temperatures. And one of the significant findings that we found is that certain fungi under heat stress mutate a lot faster. This means that they're able to evolve traits faster um, under certain stressing conditions. We, for example, found an increase in drug resistance and also an increase in their ability to survive at higher temperatures or thermal adaptation. These are traits that could make them more disease causing. So our research is really focused on how we can understand and address these rising risks in a warming climate. And there's some other environmental changes that might affect the fungi population in the environment, like moisture. What are you seeing there? Right. Um, so our lab doesn't specifically cover changes like humidity, but these are a list of things that we're looking at. Things like rises in CO2 um, or carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, also changes in pH, and also just the overall disruption of soils and the increase of fungal spores in the air that right. spread and again, increase exposure. So why do you think Duke is well positioned to really take on this challenge of looking at the intersection between climate change and health? Right. Well, we're actually very fortunate. Duke School of Medicine has a high concentration of both research faculty and also um, physician scientists that treat fungal diseases. And so we work collaboratively and extensively together in research groups. We're really excited that the Climate Change and Strategic Plan Initiative led by Rob Tai has really fostered interactive collaborations between different research groups that allows us to expand and do the types of research projects that we're not typically able to do with the particular focus of, of a particular lab. So for example, we have a really exciting collaboration between Duke School of Medicine researchers, a new group called CLIF, or Climate Impacts of, of Fungi, is collaborating with Pratt School of Engineering, Premier, and also Duke Biology to go out to Western North Carolina and isolate fungal samples from following post um hurricane flooding. Um, and that's really important because fungi like molds tend to thrive after flooding events and this increases the risk of, of fungal disease. So we want to go out there and collect samples and actually find out what are the potential health risks. So this focus really does tap into this concept of One Duke, which is bringing together multiple disciplines across a broad range of science mm -hmm. to focus on an area that is new. Absolutely, and this is going to be essential as we tackle this generational challenge of climate change impacts on fungal disease. One thing I really want to point out is that we're having, Duke is going to host its inaugural Climate and Fungi Change Symposium. And this, I think, is the first of its kind. And this is really going to bring together a lot of scientists that are like-minded and want to actually tackle and solve these kinds of issues that are facing us as far as fungal threats. I love the fact that we're going to be a leader in this area. So thank you to you and your team. When you look at some of the big challenges, what do you see that they're really we're going to be facing? 
Yeah, I think what um, concerns us most is that we have a limited arsenal of antifungal drugs and no antifungal vaccines. So this is really an area where we need to bolster our research and development, but also get a sense for the, what are the real issues and problems that we're facing. With We need better diagnostics, better surveillance, and then just people that are working on developing new antifungal therapies and dra drug vaccines. We know some of those needs predated this understanding Absolutely. of the potential intersection between climate change and health, but really important to focus there. Absolutely. Um, in fact, a lot of the antifungal drugs that we currently have, many of them have toxic side effects and really should not be the standard of care. Right. So we're hoping that um, we're really able to shine uh, a light on the fact that we need better diagnostics and we need better antifungal interventions. Asia, thank you for your leadership. And thank you for having taken a, a role in, in really putting us on the map for climate change and health. Thank you.